Hey, yo, what's up guys, Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time with a pretty nifty problem today. It's problem 50, it's a real old one, Power pow xn, uh, where we need to implement a power function which calculates x raised to the power n. Super straightforward, it couldn't be simpler. Facebook is, uh, Facebook likes this. Facebook likes this a lot, and hopefully by the end of this video, you will too. I think it's kind of a, a, a an, almost a bit of an odd problem, but I and one that seems to scare a lot of people, as you can see by the, the down votes, but I don't think that it, it needs to. I think we can get this one with a pretty with a pretty cool trick that you may have seen in other problems. Um, if not, I'll walk you through it. Simply put, uh, we get an input of 2 and 10. We need to calculate 2 to the power of 10. If we get 2.1, 3, so we, we get a float and an integer. We need to take the float, put it to the power of the integer, and spit out the output. Uh, note that we are... We can have uh, positive and negative numbers as, as inputs, um, and those will be anywhere between negative, to 100, uh, negative 100 to positive 100, and the power itself will be negative, you know, the, I guess this is the um, negative, or like integer min value and, and integer max value here, although the result itself will be anywhere between, it'll be within the range of the absolute value of, of I guess that's 10,000, uh, meaning we don't really have to worry about integer overflow or anything like that. So, um, and I should, like, I don't think I need to say this, but I probably should because somebody's already gone ahead and just said return x to the power n or whatever that is in your, um, in your, in your language of choice, whatever the notation is for the built-in power function. We got to implement that ourselves. So nowhere in your code are you allowed to actually use the built-in power function, okay? That's the, the whole purpose of the question. So with that out of the way, let's, let's take a look at, at this result over here and, um, uh, right off the bat, let me let me just say the example we're going to walk through and how we're going to build out the logic will be uh, will be in taking care of this uh, this question using positive exponents. The negative ones we're we're going to figure out how to do a quick workaround with a, just a bit of error checking, and we'll we'll build that into the into the the error checking portion. But I, I promise, if we can nail this down, then everything else will make sense. So we want to calculate. In this case, if x is 2 and n is 10, we want to calculate 2 to the power of 10. Okay, And so even, even more generally, maybe what I'll do as we, as we walk through this example is I'll, I'll just say, let's calculate x to the power of 10. <clears throat> okay, um, One trivial solution that you can do would be just to say, well, let me take x and multiply it 10 times. So you in, in your code, you could say something like, um, I don't know, you can say result equals 1. You can say for for some number of times in the, in the range of, of n, then you can just say result times equals x. And, and you do that that many times, then you, you return the result. And so really you're just multiplying a number, a linear number of times. That will, be, that will be a linear time solution. That will also be a constant space solution. So overall, not bad, uh, but can we do better? The answer is yes, we can definitely do better. Um, especially if you think about, you know, maybe we had something like, what if this x was like a 1.01, it was a super small number, and we put it to the power of, of max integer, so 2 to the 31 minus 1 is going to be huge. Um, we're going to run into issues even doing this linearly. Let me now, let me say a couple things here. Um, for those of you who've done a, a problem, so there's a problem that states the following. It's actually, in a, in a weird way, this problem is a, is a covered up version of this, of this other problem. Um, Imagine that I gave you the number one. Okay, so I gave you the number one and I gave you the number 10. So I gave you, this is, let's call it point A and this is point B. And I, I couldn't find what this problem was called on LeetCode, but um, maybe someone can drop it in the comments below. How, what's your most efficient way to get from A to B if you're only allowed to multiply by two or add one? So at any given step, you can multiply by two or you can add one. You can only do one of these two things, and each of those you can do. In, so each one of these operations is um, is one step. Okay. What's your quickest way? What's the the least number of steps that'll get you to from one to ten, or from any point A to point B? Um, if you'd like, if you'd like to think about this, uh, you can pause the video and, and give it a shot because actually understanding this will be the key to also understanding how to do this uh, power uh, function over here. So. For those of you, and I'll, I'll assume you kind of pause if you wanted to, you've made your way back now. Um, another way that we can ask this question is to just flip it around and say, what would be the shortest way for me to get from 10 to 1 if all I could do was divide by 2 
or subtract one. So why would that be important? Well, let's think about this. If we had, so we acknowledge that, uh, I'm going to get rid of this. We acknowledge that x to the 10 is really just equal to x times x times x. And we're going to do this a total of 10 times. Right, we acknowledge that this is kind of the, the linear progression. But what if there's a quick way to do this? What if we could do this in, in less than 10 steps? How would we do this in less than, than 10 steps? Well, why don't we think about the following? Um, if I take a number and, and square it, so let's, let's go back to grade 9 math, or you know maybe you did this even earlier. Let's say I had x to the 5. How do I get from x to the 5 times to x to the 10? So it's true that we could say times x times x and, and do that kind of five more times. Or we could think about the fact that squaring it would result in one operation. So if I had x to the 5, I could just multiply it by another x to the 5. And that would, that would get me to where I want to be. So we could almost do that in, in one step, if you will. It's assuming we had x to the 5. So let's, let, let's kind of work with that. So let's say that we can acknowledge that we can get to x to the 10 if we had x to the 5 and, and x to the 5. The nice thing about it was that 10 was even, so we know if we just took half of 10 as a power and then squared it, we'd get to where we want to be. Okay, but 5 is, this isn't as nice, right? 5 is not even, is it? So the issue with 5 is that we can't just say, so I, I can't really say take x to the power of 2.5. So mathematically you can, I understand. So before someone yells at me, um, I understand mathematically this is like, this would be the root of x to the power to the power of five. Um, I didn't get that. Did I get that right? Five over two root of x to the power of five. Sure. Um, I understand this is mathematically possible, but to keep breaking this number down, like this isn't going to play out very nicely if we're trying to, to work with integers to build up to where we want to be here. So maybe we think, okay, maybe this method breaks down and, and just kind of breaking this number down if we don't start with a power of two. Like maybe if I had eight, x to the eight, this could be really easy because I could just say, take x to the 4 and x to the 4, and that breaks down into, into x squared and x squared, and we could just really multiply those together, and in each of these um, breaks down into, into an x, and I, I think you guys get the drift here. So really, I could just take the x, square it to get x squared, square it to get x to the 4, square it to get x to the 8. And when I say square it, I mean multiply it by itself. So in fact, when we're writing the code, we don't have to use the built-in a power function because we could just multiply a number by itself. If we do that, look how we get from x to x to the 8. I do one step, I multiply x by itself to get x squared, that's one step. I do x squared times x squared, since I've calculated it, that gets me to x to the 4, that's two steps. I do x to the 4 times x to the 4, that gets me here. In three steps, instead of 8, I've gone from x to x to the power of 8. So what does that remind you? I could have done it in eight steps, but I could do it in three. Kind of sounds like, looks like, smells like a logarithm to me. So we can actually do this in logarithmic time. Now, back to this previous example. So th this one is a bit easier, you could argue, because we already had our, our exponent was a power of two. And I apologize. So for those of you who are new, new to my channel and the audio is getting all wacky, um, I do these on a 2013 MacBook Pro that essentially runs on, on like two grains of corn. So it's just super super loud um, when I'm recording, so sorry about that. But how do I break down this, this x to the 5? One thing that I could notice is that, sure, I can't necessarily break down x to the 5, but I could break down x to the 6. So keeping that in mind, what I could do is I can say, well, what if I had x to the 2, or rather, let me say this, x to the 3 times x to the 3 divided by x. Right? So if I had 5 to the power plus 1, and then I said, so I, x to the 5, instead of x to the 5, add x to the 6, I could acknowledge it. Then I can go to x to the 3 times x to the 3. And when I said divided by 2, I meant divide by x. I'm sorry about that. Sure, x is 2 here, but I'm just I'm solving this for the, for the generic case. Well, if we, if we did the same logic here for, for x cubed, I could say x cubed really just breaks down into, and maybe I'll only do one branch here, really breaks down to x squared times x squared divided by x. Okay, And here's the nice thing. x is our input value. If I ever get to x squared, that's easy. I can return x squared for free. I can just say return x times x. If I return x times x, well, that'll return it here. We can multiply it by itself. 
we get this x cubed, which we multiply by, again, itself and divide by x. That gets us to x to the 5. I multiply by itself. I get to x to the 10. Once again, I've done this in logarithmic time. All right? So that's the, that's the general logic on how we're, on how we're going to solve this. We're, we're basically saying the following. If we have a power, so if, I'll say p for power, uh, modular 2 is equal to 0, meaning if it's an even number, let's make it even easier. I'll say this. If p is even, what do we want to do? We want to take... Um, the number, so I'll take, a, you know, we'll take x to the power of p over 2 times x to the power of p over 2. And, and what we'll do is we'll say maybe we can, we can store a number and we'll call that number half. So we'll say half is equal to um, x to the power of p over 2. And we can do like a, a recursive call on this. And then we would just say, well, let me take, uh, I'm going to return x to the x to the p or I'm gonna return half times half. So let me do this. Half times half. And that's what I'm gonna return. Otherwise, if p is even, then I'm gonna make a recursive call downwards. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna call it on p divided by two plus one. So else I'm gonna call half on and I'm kind of running out of space here. On on maybe the power of uh, p divided by 2, so I'm going to floor it like this. Excuse me, we're going to ceiling it. So I'm going to do a, a ceiling call on p divided by 2, and I'll explain why in a second, plus 1. Okay? And this is why we're going to do it. When I when I went from 5 down to 3, I said 5 divided by 2, we know gives us 2.5. To get this structure where we can actually we can do this calculation, um, I'm interested in getting up to 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, full, uh, the ceiling of it. So that's our notation for, for ceiling function. Uh, so that means just basically round up. Um, and so once I do that, then I'll be able, once I make a recursive call down, I'm, I'm essentially going to keep recursing downwards until I get to the base case, which I'm going to call x squared. Because once I get to x squared, I can just call x times x. And, and what that'll do is that'll then propagate back upwards and get us to here in linear time. And that's why this question is actually no different than the problem that I proposed earlier, which again, you can find on leap code, which is on, on what the quickest way is to get from point A to point B if you can only add by one and multiply by two, right? I hope this made sense. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. Um, the, the code is, is going to be pretty simple. Um, and also in the code, I'm going to address how we're going to deal with, with negative um, fractions as well or negative exponents. But if you can get, get this point, then the rest of it should be much easier. Um, so x is going to be a float, and n is an integer. That's not really going to change anything for us. We're going to return a float, and that's that's fine. I do want to do a bit of error checking for just some of the, the standard um, powers. And so it'll it'll make the code, I think, a bit easier to deal with. One thing that we can do is just to say if, if n, so if our exponent is equal to 0, uh, we're going to return 1. Now, again, if you're a mathematician, someone's going to be yelling at me and commenting, what about 0 to the power 0? Don't bother. In, in computer science, we just... Um, we define it typically as zero to the zero is, is one. It's not undefined. So we're not breaking any rules here. I'm just, we're good here, all right? Um, then here, here's the other thing that I want to do. What if my exponent is negative? So maybe I'll say L if N is less than, if it's less than zero. Okay, what we're going to do is this. The only thing you got to acknowledge is that if I've got X to the power of negative N, this is equivalent, or it actually it's equal to one over X, to the power of positive n, okay? And then this we already know how to solve. We're just gonna do it this way. So all I'm gonna say is if, if n is less than zero, I'm gonna make it positive. So I'm gonna multiply it by, by negative one. And then I'm gonna say x is equal to one divided by x. And that's it. Um, once we do, so once I take care of this part, I know that all my exponents that I get are gonna be either positive, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be positive, all right? That's all that I know. So zero we took care of, negative numbers we took care of. Um, I'm also going to say here that if, if x is equal to 1, I'm just, I'm just going to return x. Uh, excuse me, if n is equal to 1, I'm just going to return x so we get that for free. And then in my, my base case, in my recursion, we'll just kind of work down to the x squared number. So um, we're going to have to, I'm going to define some sort of, you know, super conveniently named uh, helper function. And then I think what all we're going to do is we're going to return a call to the helper. And what we're going to pass in there is the exponent. So I'll call it exp for exponent. 
And, and what we'll do with this exponent is the following, is we'll say uh, if exp is equal to 2, this is going to be our, our terminal condition. Um, so if the exponent is equal to 2, what do we want to do? Well, that means that we want to return x times x. Exponent of, of 2 says take our value x and, and square it. Uh, we can do that just by saying, saying x times x, we're cool. Otherwise, if we get, so let me say this, somebody inputs, you know, any value for x and then, and then this becomes a squared, which is kind of the lowest value they'll um, input before we jump in here, we'll immediately just return the squared. Otherwise, we're going to have to break down and, and work toward it. So our two other conditions were if, if the exponent is now negative, uh, if it's even or odd, excuse me. So if exponent uh, modulus 2, if I can type, if it's equal to 0, we're going to want to return the following. Well, let's think about this. So we said the kind of, I'll call it half. So one half of this, this multiplication, if you will, um, was equal to the following. We, we were just going to call the helper function and we were going to call it on the exponent divided by 2. So if we had a 10, which is even, I'm going to want to make a recursive call so I can get x to the power 5, which is exactly half of that. I'm then going to want to return half times half. So if I get 10, and I, I, I input a 10 here, my first recursive call will say, get me what x to the power 5 is. That's right here. That's going to be this value. And then return that number multiplied by itself, because that'll be this times this. And that'll get me to x to the 10. And eventually, once we work down and back up the, sorry, up and then back down the call stack, this is going to be what we're, what we're returning. Otherwise, if it's an odd number, what's this, this half going to be equal to? Well, we said that we're going to take uh, the ceiling function of, of this exponent, so in this case 5, we're going to divide it by 2, take the ceiling of it, um, and then, so let's do that first, and then we're going to add 1. Uh, are we, uh, I believe we're going to, sorry, we're going to take the ceiling of it, so let's do this. Um, or we'll just do this. We'll do uh, helper is equal to exponent, whoops, divided by 2, whoops, oh man, brutal, exponent divided by 2 plus 1. So 5, double down, we'll get down to the, to the 2, and then add 1 will get us to 3. Once we have that number, we're, we're going to want to return half times half again. So just like we had here, so imagine x cubed times x cubed, that would give us x to the 6. So we also want to divide by, by this x here. Um, so half times half uh, divided by x. And that should be it. I'm, I'm going to give this a quick run and make sure I didn't mess anything up, which I, I did. No, I didn't. All right, so I think that just took a bit longer than planned. Let me try to submit this and make sure that I didn't make any errors. There we go. Cool. Um, so quick recap, bring this back down. Oops, bring this back down. Uh, this in essence was, was a, a problem that was equivalent to saying, how do I get from one number to, to a bigger one, from one integer to another, um, in as little steps as possible, if all I'm allowed to do is, is multiply by two or add one. The reason we're, not that we're only allowed to multiply by two, we could have done this linearly like we saw at the start of the video, but we did acknowledge that there was a faster way to do it and, and, and to, you know, the reason we acknowledge that is because it was pretty, it was in constant time, we could, we could square a number if we had it. And squaring a number get me, gets me exponentially closer to where I want to be a lot faster than just adding, adding one number, one number at a time. So for me to get from, you know, from, from X to the five to X to the 10, I could multiply by X five times, or I could just multiply X to the five by itself. And that's a lot faster. And that's how we ended up coming up with this with this logarithmic solution, which I think is I think it's a pretty clean solution. I do. Um, the the only space where, so uh, I guess the, the the time we're taking up is is logarithmic. The space hypothetically is what would be logarithmic because we are call stack because we are call stack um, because we are we are using the recursive call stack. So whatever we put up on there will be the maximum height of it should be I believe just the, the log of n. Um, so we got a logarithmic time and space complexity. If you guys have any other questions about this problem or others, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to share this with, with all your buddies. They're going to think you're like the coolest human in the world for doing leak code uh, in your spare time on Wednesday nights instead of partying. Uh, yeah, okay. My brain's turning to mush. I, I, I got to stop speaking. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.